Hi guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Epic Car Show. Now in today's video, I'm not going to be teaching you a load of different things. I'm actually going to be talking about something incredible that happened in my life. And this happened back in December and I had to keep my mouth shut. I couldn't tell anybody about it until earlier in the month. And I suppose a lot of you all now know I was the guy who had to do all the Bond cars for Top Gear. And boy, have I got a story to tell. So back in December, I was just having a usual day where I did loads of work. I used to get in late. And you know what? I get millions of phone calls every day. And there's quite a lot of them that I just don't get around to answering just because I'm a busy boy. But this one in December, for whatever reason, I was indoors and I was like, I've got to answer the phone. I've just got to answer it. For something in my head was going, Dave, just get the bloody phone. So I did. And it turned out it was one of the guys from BBC. And he was like, can you clean any cars for us next week? I was like, first of all, no, I, I can't. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just literally too busy. And he's like, oh, we, we've got some cars. It's, it's really important. There's some real rare cars and we need you to look after them. I'm like, yeah, I still can't. I still can't. We were sort of going back and forth. He was trying to sort of, he didn't want to tell me what they were. Like he couldn't tell me because obviously he was sworn to secrecy. But <laughs> I had to know because like, I was just going, no, 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 no. And then as soon as he said the words, we're up at Dunsfold Aerodrome. I was like, okay, I'm on it. It's Top Gear. And I was like, well, what cars am I going to have to do? Because obviously I've got an insurance policy that covers me to X amount. And the way it was going on, it was as if, you know, these are probably some of the most valuable cars in the world. It turns out they were actually. So in the end, I finally managed to sort of get it out of him. And he didn't tell me what they are. To be fair, he never told me what they are. He's like, yeah, they're from, they're from a film franchise. I was like, okay, all right. It's James Bond, isn't it? After loads of phone calls, I finally managed to get the gig and I was so excited because the Bond cars are like, that's the biggest thing. In terms of being a detailer, you've got like the film cars, which are obviously the biggest, but you know, these are some of the most famous cars like ever featured in history. So I was just like, wow, I can actually put my name on them and say that I've had to look after them. So I'd just been outside all day doing the van racking. Everything was looking good. I was ready to go to bed and then I had a phone call and they're like, can you come in tonight? I was like, oh, brilliant. I was so knackered, I needed to go to bed. And you'll see in the video, where I'll put a link to it, the Top Gear video they put on social media. There's me talking, going, my name's David Walker. I'm looking after the James Bond cars. Oh my God, I look like absolute But what you didn't see in that video was the fact that I got, I got there like half past eight. I think it was about half eight. And I worked all the way till half three in the morning. I then had to get home at half four, go to bed. So I went to bed about, yeah, literally about half past four. And then it was half five, six o'clock. I got up and then I had half an hour to 45 minutes to get there. So I didn't get there at half six. I got there about like quarter to seven. But to do the 12 hour shift after that, it was just, oh man. Honestly, if people say that you don't work hard enough, or especially if people say I don't work hard enough or call me a hack detailer or whatever for what I do, they're completely wrong. The amount of hard effort that I actually put into what I do is unreal. People don't know the full story. Unfortunately, when you see things on YouTube, a lot of things are sort of set up. When I do my videos, everything sort of looks calm and I try to make things look nice for the viewer. But what you don't see is the crazy amount of work that goes into it. So I would love to do a video later on in the year on that just to show you the reality of what goes on behind the scenes because I think you're probably gobsmacked and I don't really want to send the wrong signals across if you guys want to start out doing this and you look at the video and you're like, yeah, it's easy. Anybody could do that. You can't. There is a real hard amount of effort that has to be put in it to make it work. So they were really long hours from the moment the phone rung and they're like, right, can you come in tonight? I was already dead. Like there was no at no point did I ever sit there and go, oh, do you know what? I could I could I could do another like I could I could do another five, six hour shift. No problem. <laughs> I couldn't. I was just so done in. Oh God. I remember just sort of walking in. I saw, I think there's about 14 cars there now. As soon as I walked in, I was just like, oh my God, what do I do first? Because I think those cars have just been stored away for like a million years. They're covered in like, I think the best way to describe it is like muck from pollution, just from being sat around. And it was really thick as well. So I had to do it all by hand. Some of these cars were going up to the value of 3.3, 3.5 million. There was no way I could break out a jet wash. And especially at those stupid hours in the morning, it was just like, 
it was it was not possible the cars couldn't move they're all they were strategically placed so they couldn't be moved anywhere so it was all done by hand a lot of people don't know that but i had to get loads of buckets and literally hand wash everything and also i had to say a massive thank you to nick at yum because he sorted me out with all the chemicals i needed and i wanted to go for something really special they're like can you use your best stuff so i did i used all yum products for all the cars and yeah massive thank you to nick so people were saying, yeah, were well, you starstruck in that when you saw the cast and that? I was like, to be honest, there was one moment where I was really starstruck. It was peeing down with rain. I was standing underneath this really old, like, I don't know, army plane, whatever you want to call it, on the airfield. And I was just standing there thinking, God, this is just dire. Like, I'm getting soaking wet. And, yeah, the moment I was starstruck was literally when the snack man, he just pulled up in his van. He's like, Dave, there you go. I had, like, loads of fake Rocky bars. They didn't have the proper branded stuff. I think like the crew got all the fake stuff from Lidl and like yeah Paddy and that obviously got real rocky bars but he come out with like there was a cup of tea I had some, my fake chocolate bars it was just like amazing that was probably like the most that was like the highlight for me honestly talk about a savior when when you needed it the most like when you're literally standing there going I just can't cope anymore yeah so big shout out to the snack man I don't know who he was but yeah thank you so there were so many things I had to do and a lot of people don't realise this but those cars were cleaned like every single couple of shots every single time the car did a lap or two laps they had to literally pull it in get it all cleaned down ready to get some nice shots because it was peeing down with rain you couldn't just wipe the car over and go oh that's it we had start stop rain sun rain sun it was just relentless like the, they couldn't have picked like the worst week to film these cars and on TV it all looks really glamorous I had no idea how much they put into it like to get those perfect shots we must have done like the first day was 12 hours filming maybe more we did that for like three days solid and I still did my bits on the Sunday before but to do all that and put that into a half an hour segment on a channel like I never realized how hard like the cameramen worked but it was just so good because I could actually see what was going on behind the scenes I was like right that's what I've got to do to my channel. It was like, of all the places I could have landed, it was right there. Like, it's just so good. So it was a really good week and everything was going really well. But then something terrible happened and it was the very last day, a um, couple of hours before we were having like, you know, the wrap, the closing down bit or whatever, you know, just finishing everything. It was on the Friday. Um, yeah, like we had a call from the vets and our little puppy who was about seven months old, she had to be put down, um, kidney failure, it just, it took her out. So it was, it was just the highlight of my life. Like one of the greatest moments ever was just completely destroyed in, in seconds, in seconds. You, ha you can go from life taking you up on that massive journey, like everything's just incredible, but yeah before we were finished that was it yeah they they said she she just didn't make it she couldn't she couldn't make it and yeah to have a pup who just we who we nothing you know she was fine a few days later that's it oh god no words there's there's, there's no words so oh god i don't know if there's any sort of point to this story that i'm going to say but what i want to say is you can get really good moments in life i'm not going to start preaching or giving you any of that you can get these really wonderful moments but for every wonderful moment there's always going to be a crap moment and i think that sort of applies with detailing obviously this was a personal thing that happened in my life that went completely wrong but man you've got you've got to be made of steel like i i think there's a lot more to this job from the mental aspects of it a lot of people think car cleaning's easy um it, it isn't there is so much hard work that you've got to put in and if you're not i mean you can be physically fit i don't care how fit you are but at the end of the day if you're not mentally fit and you're not cut out for it this job will kill you and it will destroy you inside like after that i didn't want to go to work for weeks and i think i pretty much closed down because it was t like two days before christmas that she died and that was when we finished filming on the last day and now that was it i was just done i was done so that's sort of why I, I did some stupid videos, I think, in December where I was trying to be not funny. I was just trying to sort of lighten my own mood and a lot of people didn't see that. So I did a video on my van racking, my pallet racking, and uh, I, was, I was just trying to be gimmicky. It didn't work. It didn't work. I was just trying to be funny because 
what people didn't see was that it was just a few days before that we lost my dog so I was, I was clinging on to any little bit of happiness I had from the Top Gear gig and yeah it was, man it just sucked it really did suck the, the bad news we had over Christmas but anyway I'm gonna leave it there I don't really like ending things on a on a sad note but that was it I went from the biggest high in my life straight down it was almost like as if someone had literally just stood there and said no you get back down you've got to get back in your place and that's why I feel really motivated with this channel because I get a lot of hate uh, <laughs> I don't know if a lot of you are gonna go yeah I can I can tell why you get hate I get people send me messages every single day saying oh, I can't even say it. it's so bad it's it's horrendous and I'd say for every 10 nice messages I get I probably get about two or three negative ones because people don't always agree with what I say but the problem is I have to be real with people I have to be honest I'm not just gonna stand and say oh it's easy anybody can do it because you can't you've got to be made of stern stuff to do it but I, I'm ready I'm really ready to be moving forwards now and I think this channel is going to really blow up so according to Social Blade they think I'm going to hit 100k in 12 months so I hope they're flipping right but if you can please share the videos that I do I appreciate everything um, and if you want to sort of know a bit more about what I do because I've had so many jobs where I've worked for premiership football clubs and celebs and there's things I can and can't say but boy I've got some good stories so I'll leave it there anyway, but uh, I'll see you very soon because I've got my price list video. That's the one that's coming out next. It's the price list video and then it is the Poundland video. I promise you that is coming. That's just taken so long to do because I've been filming here, there and everywhere. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And this is the third attempt at filming the video. So the video has already been done twice from Halloween just before December as well. We did it and I just wasn't happy with it. So... This will be the third attempt and it is coming out very soon. But look, I'll leave it there and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.